evening, everyone. Welcome to the March 1st, 2011 meeting of the Glendale City Council. May we have the roll call, please? Council members Raymond? Here. Friedman? Quintero? Here. Beaver? Here. Mayor Najarian? Here. Uh, Council member Draymond, the agenda says that you'll be saying the flag salute. However, uh, would you yield to two special guests? I certainly will. And the guests are? Well, the guests are Matthew Deridorian and Armin Terzakarian. Thank you. Gentlemen, scouts, would you please lead us? Okay. Those in civilian clothing, uh, put your right hand over your heart, and those in uniform, salute. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for the invocation. March, 1st, uh, March 2nd and last month we marked Black History uh, Month and observed and took note of the countless contributions that Americans of African ancestry have contributed to our great nation. None are better known than the great author and civil rights pioneer, Booker T. Washington. It was Mr. Washington who said, quote, success is to be measured not so much by the position that one has reached in life as by the obstacles which he has overcome while trying to succeed, end quote. As we reflect upon the struggles of various groups for equal rights in America, and particularly those led by African Americans for civil rights, let us be mindful of the obstacles that were overcome. Let us pray that as a nation those obstacles will never be placed before any other group. Let us pray for the memory of those who sacrifice their lives so that we may live in a free society that judges individuals by the content of their character. We pray for the welfare of our own residents and for the prosperity of this city. Finally, let us pray for our men and women in our armed forces who continue to serve abroad, keep them from harm, and return. Amen. May we please have your report? The agenda for the March 1st, 2011 regular meeting of the Glendale City Council was posted on Thursday, February 24th, 2011 on the Bolton Board outside City Hall. Thank you. And the next item? Under presentation and appointments, number three on the agenda is 3A agenda preview for the meetings of March 8th, 2011. Spears. Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council, for March 8th, we have no business agenda items for the Glendale Housing Authority. Uh, at 2.30 for the Glendale Redevelopment Agency, uh, we have two business agenda items. One is Director of Community Development. This is continued from February 15th, February 22nd, and March 1st regarding response to the owner participation proposals for development of, of property located at 123 West Colorado Street and 230 South Orange Street. Secondly, Director of Community Development regarding incentives for art and entertainment district business and request for assistance for HVAC improvements at 145 North Maryland Avenue. We do have a joint public meeting of the Glendale City Council and the Redevelopment Agency. Public hearing, Director of Community Development, Downtown Art and Entertainment District, and Director of Community Development. This is regarding Central Glendale Redevelopment Project Area Bond Financing. In the evening at 6 p.m. for the Glendale City Council meeting, uh, we have a few consent items. Chief of Police regarding Governor's Office of Emergency Services, Law Enforcement and Victim Services Division Project Safe Neighborhoods Program Grant. General Manager of GWP, this is regarding Phase 2 of the Utility Operations Center Site Development, Walls, Fences, Communications Building, Storm Systems and Dorn Emergency Sewer Bypass for Glendale Water and Power. General Manager of GWP, this is an amendment to professional services agreements for architectural, engineering, and construction administration services at the Utility Operations Center for planning, program coordination, inspection, and specialized engineering support services. Under adoption of ordinances, we have ordinance amending certain sections of the GMC relating to the closure of specified public property located in fire hazard severity zones. We have a number of action items that evening. Director of Human Resources, this is establishment of classification and titles and compensation for employees of the City of Glendale. Director of Human Resources, amendments to the Civil Service Rules and Regulations. Director of Community Development, this is an addition of one Senior Building Code Specialist uh, position to the Community Development Building and Safety section. Uh, and lastly for action items, we have City Clerk regarding the follow-up to the report of elections uh, from last week. And we have one item under hearings, Director of Community Development. This is regarding proposed ordinances to amend Title 30 of the Glendale Municipal Code and downtown specific plan relating to miscellaneous revisions and minor cleanups. And 
that concludes my report, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Next item, please. 3B is presentation to the City of the Second Place Affiliate Award from Keep America Beautiful. Hey, is there anyone from the uh, Keep America Beautiful Award? Good evening, Mr. Mayor and Council Members. My name is Jim Reichel, and I'm Chairman of the Committee for a Clean and Beautiful Glendale. Uh, this will be one of the uh, lightest and happiest items on your agenda this evening, and I'll take no more than 10 minutes of your time. <laughs> the committee serves as the city's official Keep America Beautiful affiliate. Keep America Beautiful is the nation's largest community action and education organization with a network of nearly a thousand affiliates and participating organizations Keep America Beautiful forms private, public partnerships and programs that engage individuals to take greater responsibility for improving their community's environment. Now out of those thousand affiliates that encompasses cities and counties in the United States of America as well as some international cities. Each year uh, Keep a Beautiful Keep America Beautiful honors the cream of the crop with the National Affiliate Award. The second place National Affiliate Award recognizes the city of Glendale as a top leader in community beautification programs nationwide. These programs range from volunteer-driven community beautification events such as the Great American Cleanup to in-school character building programs which instill a sense of civic, civic pride and responsibility in students at an early age. Examples are the Junior Ambassador Program in the middle schools and the current Knockout Graffiti in Glendale program that's going on in the elementary schools from kindergarten through eighth grade. Many of the, of the solid waste management programs and efforts of the city's public works department contributed to the city's national ranking in addition to various new partnerships with community-based organizations that were forged throughout the year. These resulted in innovative programs such as the Monterey Road Echo Community Gardens. It is with great honor that I present to you, Mayor Nigerian, and the Council, the second place affiliate award for 2010 from the Committee of a clean and beautiful Glendale. And I thank you for your continued support of our committee. Here it is. It's beautiful. Uh, on behalf of the city, uh, I'm very proud to receive this. I know that um, the council doesn't do all that much for it. It's the hard work of uh, citizens and groups like yours uh, that bring home the pride and that show to everyone that visits Glendale that we are concerned about the, uh, the appearance and the integrity of our community. So thank you very much. Item, Next is City Council and staff comments. Okay, let's start off by reminding everyone that April 5th uh, is the uh, date of the Glendale Municipal Elections. Uh, everyone, uh, please get out and vote on April 5th. Uh, it's not too late still to request a uh, absentee <coughs> ballot, to request a permanent absentee ballot. Uh, Artie, what other ways are there to vote? Uh, going to the polls? Going to the polls in the old-fashioned way, <laughs> <laughs> showing up uh, April 5th, and uh, we really need a, a good voter turnout so uh, the, the true will of the people can be reflected uh, in this and every election that we hold here in Glendale. And we have public service uh, reminders up on the screen. 
Mr. Mayor and Council, also uh, that phone number, that's 818-548-4000, which is for the City Clerk's Office and Election Services. If anyone is interested in being a poll worker and helping us out at the polls, please have them call that. We always welcome um, volunteers from the community to help us out on Election Day and are looking for new people. Thank you. Mr. Weaver. Marty, when will the Election Center be staffed? Uh, we are actually working on that right now. We hope to have it staffed by middle of next week. Staffed as in with people. But we already have uh, desks, a counter, um, work areas, and stations being put in there now. If anybody calls the 4,000 number, are they it's getting... It's directly to the city clerk's office. City clerk. And in the future, then... The It'll be the same number because we're on the same campus. It'll just be uh, transferred over okay, to Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Mr. Draymond. Uh, Mr. Mayor, on Sunday uh, afternoon, I had the pleasure of representing you and the rest of the council and the city uh, at a special program at the Homenet Men uh, Ararat Chapter Center, uh, where the two gentlemen who uh, were having a picture taken with you earlier, Mr. Mayor, and who led us all in the, uh, in the uh, Pledge of Allegiance, uh, were uh, honored and honored all of us by uh, receiving uh, their Eagle Scout, um, I guess you'd say honors, uh, their Court of Honor, and they are the first two Eagle Scouts from the uh, Hominid Men Ararat chapter. So it was very exciting uh, for the community, very exciting for the scouting program, and I know very exciting for the Scoutmaster and certainly the parents, uh, and we have both of uh, these gentlemen here today, the Scoutmaster and the parents. Uh, the, the two Eagle Scouts are Matthew Deridurian and Armin Terzakarian. Uh, and uh, uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, we uh, presented to them uh, commendations from you and the rest of the council, congratulating them and the family. Uh, but uh, there were also presentations from uh, Congressman Adam Schiff's office, uh, as well as uh, from um, – who else did you receive awards from? I'm trying to remember now. Uh, Mike, from Mike and uh, – Mike Gatto as well. That's right. And, uh, and uh, Mr. DeLeon's office as well. So it was quite exciting. Um, We've asked them to come here, Mr. Mayor, so that you can uh, say a few words to them directly so they can be congratulated by the council. If you would like to ask them up, that would be Sure, wonderful. gentlemen, uh, scouts, sure, sure. please come forward. And if your scout leader would like to uh, accompany you. Uh, what I'd like to do first is to ask you to introduce yourself and uh, uh, your agent, well, except for the for those who are mature adults, don't have to give us their ages, but for the, uh, the young scouts. <laughs> I, I leave uh, that part to them, for them. Uh, to do your it. ages and where you attend school and how long you've been a scout and uh, what this means to you to be an Eagle Scout. Hello, my name is Armin Terzakarian. I am 18 years old. I currently attend St. Francis High School. I am a senior at, and I have been scouting for uh, for almost nine years now. Uh, before I start, I'd like to thank the Glendale City Council for inviting me, Matthew, and Arto here today. And uh, scouting in the last nine years has truly meant a lot to me in that it's given me something uh, to look back on and to use to f find, a pr find uh, my true purpose in life. It has allowed me to build up the core values of like honor, responsibility, and everything else that was in the scout law. And I, I have, I have lived up. I felt that I have lived up to my scout oath and scout law every day. And I feel really good about what this Eagle Scout Award is going to. Present, is going to present itself in my future. Uh, I'd like to also thank uh, right now Gary Morello, the Parks Recreation Administrator, for suggesting the Eagle Scout project to me, which was at Fremont Park. We were uh, 
uh, cleaning up an abandoned parking lot, cleaning out the palm trees, the dead leaves, and the weeds, and creating life by planting Indian hawthorns. And I also like to thank his boss, Armando Latian, for guiding us through the process and being very generous with his time and efforts. Okay, my name is Matthew Diradurian. I go to Clark Magnet High School. I, I'm in 10th grade. And then I'd also uh, like to um, thank you for inviting me uh, to the, the city council meeting. And I've been in Scouts for five years now. Um, I was never in Cub Scouts, but I'd like to thank my Scoutmaster, Arto Kazarians, for guiding me throughout the process of becoming an Eagle Scout. My, my greatest asset for me to become an Eagle Scout was my mom. Um, my Eagle, for every single Eagle Scout, there is a major project to go along with it. My Eagle project was a mural that was conducted at um, Shaman Armenian School. It was a mural uh, 75 feet long and it was, it had all the Armenian alphabet letters and a correlating image to it. And also, I on Sunday it was very it was a great occasion. I I'm happy to see Councilmember Draymond there, and I, I I will be in scouting for a long for a life after this great occasion. Thank you. Honorable Mayor Najarian, Council members and staff. Uh, first off, I want to thank you for the time you've donated, uh, given to us to introduce these two young gentlemen. Are my, basically, I'm very proud to introduce them as the uh, Eagle Scouts. Uh, Matthew and Armand did their best uh, to achieve. I want to make you keep this short. As you know, getting to the Eagle Scout rank is not that easy, and only 2% of the Boy Scouts that are part of the program achieve that rank. So it's a major milestone for their scouting life and their life, basically. And uh, I congratulate them also, and thank you very much for the time you gave us to introduce them. Thank you. And um, before you go, uh, there's perhaps one more award, a merit badge, if you will, that, that I don't see on your sashes, and that is the the Order of the Jewel City. And I'd like to ask my colleagues uh, to go down and present you each and your parents and the Scoutmaster with one such token. It's four. Okay, we'll all come down. Thank you, Scouts. Okay. Frank, do you have any comments? I just have a couple comments. Um, I would like to thank everyone from the uh, uh, Glendale City staff who went out of their way to accommodate our visitors from the city of Gapan, Armenia, last week. Uh, Zizet. Uh, Mullins played a great role, but every one of our department heads uh, was very generous in opening up their departments and explaining a little bit about what we do here in Glendale to make the city run so uh, well and efficiently. Um, and I know that the mayor and his uh, advisor took back uh, to Gapan uh, many great ideas that, that they saw uh, being implemented in the city of Glendale. So thank you to everyone uh, for helping out with that. Um, and briefly, I just want to give everyone an update on the MTA and the 710 tunnel. And uh, I had a, a meeting, a board meeting, on Thursday 
in which I requested uh, a, a valid cost estimate for the uh, construction and the, the total costs of completing the 710 tunnel. Unfortunately, I did not get what I wanted. Uh, it upset me quite a bit. In fact, I got just a very small portion of what the true costs would be. And I'm sure even the engineers on the dais would agree that before you, you should go forward with a project, uh, you should at least know what the scope is of the expenses that would uh, be involved. So I'm still at it. Uh, I've sent the uh, staff back at the MTA to come back with some valid cost estimates for us, at which time we can all sit down and have a, uh, uh, a legitimate and intelligent discussion on the cost benefits of uh, such a, a six-mile tunnel. And that's all I have. Anything from Mr. Quintero? Actually, um, we were at the uh, 5K, 10K run. The Adventist... Uh, it's a very nice affair at the Alex. Kickoff for the Kickoff the Alex Dash. Theater. And what date uh, is it actually? Uh, March 13th, March Sunday 13th. morning. Mr. Quintero will be. I'll be at the starting line <laughs> watching uh, all the people jog. And, uh, and then as I did last year, as I mentioned last year, I will then sprint over <laughs> to Porto's to be first. Uh, <laughs> To be first in line for a uh, cafe latte. <laughs> Thank you for mentioning that. It really is turning into quite a uh, exciting civic event with uh, runners and amateur uh, athletes from all over the area coming to Glendale to run our 5K course. It's organized very well by the Adventist group, and the proceeds go to their Stroke uh, Rehabilitation Center, uh, which is one of the leading centers uh, in the state of California. You can sign up. Uh, online, or you can even show up the day of. Uh, I think you need to get there probably about 7.30 if you want to sign up. But it's a uh, nice run through the downtown area. A lot of friends, a lot of uh, city workers are there, and I'm going to try and run this year again. Uh, it's just a good time, so we appreciate everyone's support in that. Staff comments? Next item, please. Consent items, including minutes, the following are routine and may be acted upon by one in motion. I mean, any member of the council or audience requesting separate consideration may do so by making such request before a motion is proposed. So moved. Second. Okay. I have no cards. We'll take roll call. Council members Draymond? Yes. Friedman? Quintero? Yes. Weaver? Aye. Mayor Najarian? Yes. Next item, please. Next item would be oral communications. This would be the three-minute uh, presentation or announcements portion. Yes, the three-minute uh, portion of oral communications. Uh, Joan Hardy, followed by Doris Tweet. Leon Mayer. Good evening, Mayor and City Council members and City of Glendale staff. My name is Joan Hardy, and I'm co-president of the League of Women Voters of Glendale Burbank. I was glad to hear that you uh, reminded us about the upcoming election because it ties in nicely to the announcements I, I would like to make. For the upcoming election, the League has organized a couple of candidate forums. This Thursday, March 3rd, at 7 p.m., the League will be moderating a candidate forum for the Glendale Board of Education candidates. There are eight candidates, and all have agreed to be present. The Glendale PTA is the host of the candidate forum, and the forum will be held at the, the boardroom of the Administration Center located at 223 North Jackson Street in Glendale. And um, the City Council Candidate Forum will be held this coming Monday, March 7th at 7 p.m. here in the City Council Chambers. There are six candidates for the Council and all have agreed to be present for this um, forum as well. We thank the City of Glendale, especially City Clerk Artie, for the cooperation in allowing this forum to take place. The public is invited um, and encouraged um, to attend. And typically, the League, we will allow questions, um, our typical way, uh, which is written questions. And if you are unable to attend the forum, we do have a website. And if you could go to our website, lwvglendaleburbank.org, you can uh, type us a question and submit it via our website, or you can get our phone number and leave it via voicemail. 
Thank you very much. Thank you. Doris Tweet, followed by Leon Mayer. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor, Council Members, Mr. Starbird, and staff. My name is Doris Tweet, and I'm here to invite all of you and the community to our annual Mayor's Prayer Breakfast uh, to be held at, on March 10th at the Glendale Civic Auditorium. Uh, we're very excited to have Lisa Bowman as our speaker. Uh, Lisa has had an interesting and diverse um, career as a professional stage and television actress, a singer and dancer, sports radio personality, and webmaster of an interfaith site. The theme of Lisa's presentation will be Rejoice, and I believe you will leave with that feeling in, in your heart and mind. Uh, six years ago, Lisa was diagnosed with MS, and she has a wonderful attitude about how the, the disease has changed her perspective and enriched her life. We will once again have a buffet breakfast. There will be serving tables for coffee, juice, pastries, and the main buffet of breakfast items. Doors open at 6. Breakfast will be available at 6.30, and the program will begin at 7. And as always, we try to move the program along so we don't keep you from your, from your jobs. Tickets are $20. We work very hard to keep the cost of the uh, breakfast down so everybody can go and we do that through sponsorships so if anyone would like to be a sponsor of the breakfast um, just contact me uh, I have some invitations in the back that I'm leaving and uh, if you have any questions the number to call is 626-298-3078 and we hope to see you there Thank you Leon Mayer Good evening, Mayor Nigerian, members of the council and staff. My name is Leon Mayer, and I'm here on behalf of the Friends of the Glendale Library Authors Program. And on Thursday, March 17th, at 7 o'clock, the Central Library, we're presenting best-selling author Susan Strait, who will talk about her book, Take One Candle, Light a Room. Think about that. Take One Candle, Light a Room. It's a novel, it's a compelling novel, contemporary novel, about a uh, family who has, has a murder in its background and slavery in its background. It's very engaging, very challenging, and it's already uh, been awarded from the, both the uh, Washington Post and the Los Angeles Times uh, Best Novel of 2010. We try to bring quality uh, authors to our programs. Now Susan Strait teaches uh, journalism and creative writing at UC Riverside and she was awarded in 2008 the Outstanding Teacher of the Year uh, which was a very coveted award there. She's also uh, it's been on uh, the uh, radio, PBS radio, as a commentator, and she's uh, very well known in literary circles, and we're really proud to have someone of her caliber coming to the, the library. That's Thursday, March 17th, 7 o'clock. Parking is at the exchange, be validated for three hours. It's free, and anybody who doesn't realize what a quality uh, asset the library is to Glendale, you got to go to our library, the central library, branch libraries, and take advantage of what is there for you to see and use. It's all free. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I don't have any other cards, so this portion of oral communications uh, is completed. Let's move on to the next item. Next item at 7A under adoption of ordinances is ordinance authorizing and approving a lease of the space on city owned uh, power poles for the attachment of fiber optic cables by Sunasys Inc. Offered by council. This was offered by council member Weaver on February 22nd, 2011. Mayor, I'll move 7A. Is there a second? I'll second it. Do we have any cards on this item? Uh, is there any discussion? Take roll call, please. Council members Draymond? Yes. Friedman? Quintero? Yes. Weaver? Aye. Mayor Najarian? Yes. Thank you. Next item. 
Your action items at 8A is the city attorney uh, regarding amendment of section 9.20.165 of the Glendale Municipal Code relating to the closure of specified public property located in fire hazard uh, severity zones. At A1 is an ordinance for introduction. Thank you. Mr. Howard. Yes, Mr. Mayor, members of council, I'll turn this over to Bobby Aldesco, assistant city attorney. He worked with the police department and fire department as well as the uh, Glenale, I'm, I'm sorry, the uh, uh, the Fire Prevention Committee of the uh, Glen Oaks Canyon Homeowners Association in bringing this ordinance to you. Aldesco. Good evening, members of council, uh, staff, audience. Uh, this ordinance extends the city's um, nighttime curfew, which currently applies to all public parks and city-owned recreation facilities and the Civic Center Square between the hours of 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. the following day to residential open space areas located in the fire hazard severity zone. Uh, the reason for the ordinance is to, in order to prevent another uh, fire in the area. Um, there are visitors who show up in the area after 10 p.m. at night uh, and use the facilities in the area in a way that's inconsistent with the city's recreational policy. Meaning they tend to drink, smoke, leave stuff around and create a hazard which can end up in a fire. Um, this matter was studied by the but the community in the, in the hillside, um, and they have uh, set, you know, they sent questionnaires, over a thousand questionnaires to members in the community. They received about 20% of responses, which were po favorable and positive to, um, to, to adopt this curfew. Um, I should also mention that this matter was brought to our attention by Mayor Nigerian and also by Councilmember Friedman, who um, approached the city attorney's office to, um, to bring this matter here. Do you have any questions? Mr. Weaver. Okay, Bobby, this is just another tool for the police department to use when appropriate. Correct? That's correct, yes. Just a tool. Yes, a, it's a tool to enforce because right now there is no real, there is no law to enforce uh, any kind of curfew or to prevent people from going up on that property after 10 p.m. at night. For the most part, will it be? Uh, citizen complaint driven, the pe words people see people doing it and they call the police to respond? Well, I'm not familiar with the means of enforcement, but it, it can be from various different sources. Usually, uh, I believe that uh, the police department has gone to the area when complaints have been made. Also, um, there are independent ways to, um, to monitor the area by, by helicopter and also by patrol. Yeah, now this is the entire city, right? all the ridge lines in the city. This relates only to the open space areas which are in, um, in high fire hazard zones. All our, all our hill sites in the fire hazard areas, so I presume that the only way you're going to cover the whole area will be with helicopters or choppers in their patrols if they notice something other than being complaint driven. I, I would have to speculate, yes. Seems logical. Thank you. Mr. Quintero? Um, one of the questions I have, how about people that like to get up early and walk even before work, 5 a.m., etc.? Are they going to be in uh, violation of the ordinance if they do? As it is written right now, um, the curfew will extend till 6 a.m. Council, of course, has the ability to craft this ordinance for that particular area uh, from behind these, um, these fire gates to reduce it to 5 a.m. or even earlier, if Council so determines. Especially in the summer. I, I work out in the morning, too, so I, but I do it at home. Yeah, that might be something we'd like to discuss. I know the concerns. I was approached by the Glen Oaks uh, Canyon. Homeowners Association, and they had taken uh, extensive photographs of some of the really dangerous activities, the, the, I guess the evidence of some of the dangerous activities that went on uh, up in the hillsides, open campfires and cigarette butts strewn about, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, you know, thinking that that's the type of activity we want to curtail, I don't imagine that they'd be waking up at 4 a.m. to hit the 5 o'clock party spot. Um, <laughs> so we could probably cut that curfew a little bit earlier. Weaver? Okay, I've lived in the canyon 71 years. I've hiked every 
hill in Glen Oaks Canyon. And to this day, my house, I can look out across the other side, 536 in the morning when it's light enough, and there are people hiking on the roads on the other side. So I talked to the police department. They have nothing wrong with us moving it to 4, 10 to 4. The party seemed to go from 10 to 3. Then they must decide they have to sleep. So by 4, 4 to 6 in the morning when it, in the summer when it's hot, a lot of people apparently go up and walk, because I've seen them. So I would suggest four, make it 10 to 4, and that would solve that problem. Let's think about those hours. And I have two cards from the public, and then we'll come back and uh, discuss it a little further. Jerry Rankin and Joan Morris. Jerry Rankin first. Could we reverse the order? You certainly can. <laughs> Joan. She always goes first. <laughs> Good evening, Mayor Nigerian council members and members of the staff. Um, my name is Joan Morris. I live in Glen Oaks Canyon, and I'm the president of the Glen Oaks Canyon Homeowners Association. I'm here tonight with Jerry Rankin, as you heard, who is also a member of our board. We are here to discuss, as you also heard, the grave danger faced by all of us who live in or near our beautiful hills. The, when the weather gets hot, dry, and windy, we worry about wildfires. In particular, we worry about hillside partygoers who may accidentally ignite a wildfire while partying. What we face in Glen Oaks Canyon, or should I say in the hills above Glen Oaks Canyon, are groups of people, mainly young people, often coming from outside Glendale, who congregate in certain locations in our hills where they drink alcoholic beverages, smoke cigarettes, smoke whatever else they might have. We know they are there because neighbors complain about the noise, put in calls to the police late at night, and because they leave their litter behind, cigarette butts, empty cans of alcoholic beverages, and so on. I believe you can all imagine that smoking in the brush-covered terrain by inebriated partygoers has the effect of substantially escalating the dangers of wildfire. We understand that this problem is faced by residents in other parts of the city as well as Glen Oaks Canyon, and that you on City Council have resolved to take action to help solve the problem. The amendment before you will help will make clear that open spaces in our hills come under the provision of Section 9.20.165 165 of the Municipal Code, which require that property owned, operated, and maintained by the city is to be closed to the public at night after 10 p.m. It will do no good unless enacting this amendment is only a first step and nighttime closure of the hills is enforced. The next step is erecting appropriate signs at the entrance of each fire road. Then comes the hard part, enforcement by an already burdened Glendale Police Department. Nevertheless, we need enforcement. It must become a high priority during hot, dry, windy weather. We call on you, the city council and city managers, to ensure that through your oversight responsibilities, nighttime closures of the hills become a reality in Glendale. And I want to thank in particular, Officer Sue Shine for her help in locating this particular code and all the support she's given our homeowners group and, and taking this forward to you and also your help when we met with you earlier. Thank you. Thank you. Jerry Rankin. Yeah, I'm Jerry Rankin, and I live in Glen Oaks Canyon, and I'm, I've been working on this project. Before I start, I would like to say that you know, this is my first time I've had a chance to talk to the City Council, but I'm really honored to, to do this because I really value the investment that you've made to the city in, in a job, in a task that's absolutely necessary. Um, and I'd also like to um, thank... Sue Shine for she's our community police person and for Glen Oaks Canyon and other areas and she's been helping us with this um, and she understands the the dangers in, in this in the hills and uh, been working hard on it Bobby Odesco has done a marvelous job with this amendment and in his presentation we thank thank him for that, um, and I, 
You talked about the, the possibility of changing the hours from 10 to from 10 to 6 to 10 to 5 or 10 to 4. And when we, you know, we sent these questionnaires out to all of the 750 homes in our canyon, um, and we got responses from 220 some odd people. Um, and some of the, re uh, very few responses mentioned that they like to go out walking early in the morning, probably be before 6 a.m. And then after we did this questionnaire, and we've, we've had some, you know, uh, meetings in, in uh, at the community center at or Glen Oaks Park, other people have mentioned that maybe it would be better for us if we could change the hour of hours from 10 to 6 to 10 to 5 was is the, the hour that they were they were mentioning so i i do agree with this idea that perhaps uh this revision would be would be helpful um so whatever happens we really appreciate your receptiveness to the idea of extending section 920 165 to protect our very precious hills thank you thank you very much you've earned a merit badge yourself mr <laughs> rankin and we'll we'll deliver that to you after this item <laughs> okay uh mr weaver yes some months ago maybe a year ago terry called me and asked about doing this and my first reaction was we have a limited police force as it is how are we going to patrol all the hills of Glendale overnight when we get our own regular patrols that we got going now and I kind of wished him luck because I didn't see how it was reasonable the point that I missed in all that was and I asked the question they'll be more complaint driven it's another tool if neighbors call we have reasons to go in and take them out arrest them and remove them that made a big difference yeah the patrols are up there at night maybe they have night vision they're watching all the time but I find it very valuable for what it is I said I've lived in that Kenya all my life and it is it does have a potential for igniting when the South Ridge burned a few years back, I was in Oceanside. My wife called me and says, the hills are on fire. It looks like gone with the wind. What should I do? I says, find your local fireman and do what he says to do. And I, last thing, I could picture it because when it comes up that ridge, it was tough. And that was generated by a cigarette off a car on the uh, 134 freeway. So... It means a lot to give us more protection. I know there, there's one other location I would go to and find hundreds and hundreds of cigarette butts. I notify the Parks and Rec, and that's been taken care of. I'm not going there, but these guys seem to find the right locations they, where they think they're hidden away, where uh, Mr. Rankin's talking about was a location, has a beautiful view of tower downtown LA so I can see why they like to go there but for the wrong reasons so apologize for not taking thinking as clearly as I should have at the time Jerry and I fully support it but I think it ought to be allowed from four on most people won't be out to five but I don't think the kids are going to be up there at four in the morning maybe they go to school who knows but you like 4 a.m. as the yeah I, I do ending of the I uh, do. I don't know how they're up there. When I get up there, I find them already walking at uh, 5.36 in the morning, so I don't know when they started. They can go a long distance on those trails. Mr. Draymond. Well, and the fact is we can always adjust this. So uh, I, I would also support the, uh, the 4 a.m. Mr. Quintero. I totally support the uh, ordinance. I think 5 is a little more uh, <laughs> just the right time, not too early. But let me say that in addition to Glen Oaks, there have been on, on two separate occasions up in the Verdugos where I live, um, we've had those same uh, issues. I mean, 
an inordinate amount of people, and I suppose they were mostly young, but people who were going up there and doing all kinds of things, including campfires. So I think this is well thought out ordinance, and uh, it's definitely needed. And um, let me ask a question, uh, uh, Mr. Aldesco. So this only pertains to city-owned property, correct? So if there's a, let's say, a private parcel up there by chance, you know, let's say that our partiers are well-versed in reading the plot maps and they plant on a private uh, parcel, what, um, what ability does the police uh, force have to stop that? That's a very good question. Um, I, I, don't, I don't believe we have the jurisdiction to go onto private property, and certainly this ordinance <coughs> would only relate to, to the open space areas that are, that are um, behind a fire, hazard, in a fire hazard severity zone, access to which is controlled by means of a gated fire road. So they would have to be behind the gated fire road. Um, I'm that not covers, aware of, the, of all the properties in the area, but I would think... This would cover a large part of the potential problems that we... All the ROS zones. That are gain access through a fire gate road. Well, um, thank you. So it seems that we're generally on board with this. The only issue is uh, whether 4 a.m. lifting it too early, uh, but we can always come back and adjust this if there appear to be early bird partiers between 4 and five or, or six. The early bird catches the worm. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, you can certainly do that now. It's germane to the ordinance. You can change 6 a.m. to 5 or 4 tonight and introduce it with that change and then move to adopt it next week with that change. And as you've all noted, if that doesn't appear to be working, we can bring it back and adjust it further. Okay, so this is for I'm hearing, though, is that 6 a.m., at least universally, is probably too late. You'd look at either 5 or 4 a.m. now. Change it now, but I, I've heard two 4 a.m.s and one 5, and I'm not sure what your position well, is. I would prefer, matter. I think a 4 a.m. would not be lifting it too soon. But we can always carry that discussion on in depth next week in case we need. That's fine. But it's for introduction any, in any event. Mr. Okay. Weaver. I'll introduce like the ordinance for my canyon. <laughs> as, well, as you want to modify it to 4 a.m. and then next week you can further discuss it. Okay. Okay. Come back with a 4 a.m. Okay. Are you still to it? Between 10 Thank you, Officer okay. Shine and Mr. Aldesco and you know, <laughs> residents of Glen Oaks Canyon. Next item, please. Next item at 8 beyond the agenda is Director of Public Works regarding 76. Five Glenmore Boulevard and 1652 Glass Drive to be declared surplus properties and the public auction of said properties. At B1 is a resolution of intent to declare a surplus and to auction city-owned properties at 765 Glenmore Boulevard, APN 5665014-900 and 1652 Gladys Drive, uh, parcel number APN 5665014904. Thank you. Mr. Starbert? Yes, I go to Steve Zarn, Director of Public Works for the Staff Report. Steve. Mr. Mayor, members of the Council, as a result of the severe rainstorms we suffered in 2004 and 5, there was both public and private property that was severely damaged in the 1600 block of Gladys and the 700 block of Glenmore. A subsequent lawsuit entailed, and as a result of a negotiated settlement, the city took ownership of four parcels. Tonight, uh, as a result, we also, let me go back, we had the responsibility to both repair the road and the slope. That work has been completed. So therefore, tonight we're before you on two of these properties to declare them as surplus so we can initiate the public auction process and sell those. Two properties, as the clerk mentioned, are 765 Glenmore and 1652 Gladys. The other two properties uh, have some issues that we need to work out in the, in the way of an uh, legal encroachment and an easement we need to work out. So once we've done that, we'll return to you with those, uh, at least one of those two properties, maybe both of those, to go through the same process. Uh, Ms. Sansoni from the City Attorney's Office worked through this, and she's available to answer any of the technical questions. I think as a result of our sale of the property on Jackson, you're fairly well versed in how the uh, property auction process goes. That was our first. Uh, so here we go with our second in less than a year. But uh, we're certainly here to answer any questions you might have. I just have a question. Um, 
there any liability that would flow to the city from selling those properties should the remedial stabilization efforts not hold? Mr. Mayor, members of council, from what I understand, the remedial measures that we've taken for these two properties are fine. These are will these are private these will be private properties, number one. Number two, all disclaimers are going to be essentially as is and whereas. All disclaimers, waivers, and releases are going to be included within this. Uh, if we notice anything on public property once they're sold, we'll take appropriate action on public property. But the answer essentially is a long way of saying no. Will it be full disclosure that these were remediated? Yes. And full background, full disclosure. Hey, I don't have any cards on this item, so this action would be to uh, commence the process where sale would be affected by an auction. Correct. It'll, it'll essentially, it's a resolution of intent to set the hearing for the auction. We'll be back April 19th is the date that we uh, have set for the actual. Is there a motion? Yes, I'll move 8B1. Second. Second. Roll call, please. Council members, Draymond? Yes. Friedman? Quintero? Yes. Weaver? Aye. Darian? Yes. You, next item? Return to oral communication. Discussion is limited to items not part of this agenda. Each speaker is allowed five minutes. Members of the council may question or respond to a speaker, but there will be no debate or decision. And the city manager may refer the matter to the appropriate department for investigation and report. Charles Hooker. My name is Charles Hooker, a lifelong resident of the city of Glendale and Montrose. Uh, what I want to ask the city council, maybe they can bring, bring this up, uh, or we could, the city of people could vote on it. If a candidate wants to run for the city council or mayor, he should be required to attend council meetings or at least you know uh, a couple times a year not just throw their hats in at the very last and it's not fair to the people that are on the city council that are doing a good job and to have somebody pop up out of the woodwork or somebody that was a former person on the city council to show up and say I'm back well we don't need that kind of person because the city of Glendale uh, should have somebody that's really interested and uh, we need to have the uh, certain communities uh, the ethnic groups in Glendale really try to get involved the Korean, the um, the Mexican American, the all there's so much diversity in Glendale. We could really use some brilliant people, and they do have some brilliant people. And I'm hoping that they'll get interested in attending the city council meetings and get involved with the city council. They can start as a young man and work themselves up. And one day, the man will say, hey, I'm mayor of Glendale. Almost like Bob Wyan, uh, just a, a self-made businessman. Let's hope that we can get that and get some orient youth orientated. We could have police officers, fire department people. I mean, all of it, it's unlimited. But let's hope that they can run. Bye now. Thank you. Next speaker is Barry Allen. I guess uh, PowerPoints are in, right? Council, staff, 
in public, I'm Barry Allen, the director of Van Guardians, a nonprofit civic organization dedicated to local government transparency and accountability. I speak tonight on a matter that relates to the honesty and integrity of an elected official whose actions have placed city employees at risk of losing their jobs and pensions for unknowingly and unwittingly becoming accessories while aiding and abetting fraudulent activity. Early in January 2011, I filed a complaint with Neighborhood Services regarding construction without the required building permits by a member of the Glendale City Council. On January 13, Sam Mingle responded with this email that followed our phone conversation. In part, Engle stated the city's research and investigation are ongoing, thus there would be no follow-up on the complaint about John Draymond's unpermitted remodel at his residence on Stancrest. Two weeks later, Councilmember Draymond filed for re-election with a financial statement showing he has an outstanding loan from one of the principals of National Fire, a subcontractor of ADI, shown here as a composite of the first and last pages of that filing. On the same day, January 27, 2011, National Fire, the ADI contractor, and Mr. Draymond applied for and were quickly granted a building permit to replace kitchen cabinets and fixtures in the kitchen and bath in one metal frame window, which is marked in the plans shown in this uh, next drawing. This plan was submitted six months after the work was completed on Draymond's unpermitted remodel and before National Fire, the ADI contractor, became a licensed general contractor. The approved permit shows a valuation of $30,000. Any contractor, any licensed contractor, who looks at all 64 photos of the interior of Draymond's condo would report a cost of about $160,000. The following photos were taken inside Mr. Draymond's condo in June and July 2010, six months before he filed for the building permits. They were taken by ADI subcontractors, and they depict a major renovation in progress, which is consistent with Mr. Draymond's December 29th statement to the LA Times. Here is a picture showing part of the kitchen renovation taken half a year before the building permit was issued. By only listing the replacement of just one window on the building permit, Councilmember Draymond was able to avoid scrutiny by the Planning Commission and DRB. The photos depict several unpermitted vinyl windows and patio doors that were replaced in 2010 prior to the building permit. Visible in this photo is a new Milgard vinyl sliding door. The sign identifies the Draymond name and unit number. This photo shows two more new vinyl sliding doors and the installation of electrical outlets, all done without permits. This shows walls torn away, exposing the new studs and new copper pipe contrasted with the old plumbing. Again, no permits. This shows a new electrical panel and new fire retardant Romex. No permits. This last photo depicts the interior ex exterior balcony wall where the concrete flooring was removed from the pan and the exterior wall was violated, which would require the review and approval of DRB. More importantly, that procedure was not listed in Draymond's January building permit, along with other major renovations. Time constraints do not allow for your viewing of the remaining 59 photos in my possession that show the nearly complete, unpermitted renovation of Draymond's condo. Photographic evidence shows a clear attempt by an elected official to defraud the city of Glendale in an effort designed to cover up the need for inspection by filing false documents and misrepresenting the extent of work in the permits that were pulled after the fact. This renovation went far beyond the scope of the permits issued. It included new wall studs, sheetrock, new vinyl windows, and on. It is one thing to file for permits for a previously completed legal or illegal remodel in Come Clean. It is altogether something else to abuse the second chance and falsify the permit. Mr. Draymond, you and ADI are not above the law. The question arises as to who really paid for the materials and labor. Were they paid for by taxpayers as part of the ADI scandal? Councilman Mr. Starbird, you now know the truth about Councilmember Draymond's remodel. Failure to immediately investigate Draymond's falsified permits would cloud the integrity of this council and the executive body. Do not wait until after the April election. I have provided the city clerk Artie Kostakian with a public document containing all 64 pictures and the materials we passed out. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Allen. Take those documents, Bobby. Next speaker, sir.
you can speak to him afterwards and uh, and have a quiet discussion. Next speaker is Richard Bennett. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and Council people. Um, I have been a uh, resident of Glendale for about 40 years. Um, I live in the Rossmine area, and having heard the last speaker, I thought it might be worthwhile to give you maybe the other side of the coin. Uh, for a number of years, I was quite disappointed in the city government. I was, didn't like the direction they were going in. In about 2007, I met someone who I really thought had a vision very similar to mine uh, about the city. And it is a vibrant city, one that had restaurants and culture and movies. Uh, I met him, talked to him, uh, decided that I would work on his campaign. I worked very diligently, um, and in 2007, he was elected. Um, and that man is John Draymond. Since then, I have become uh, somewhat friends with him, uh, and I have uh, really seen a change in the city and certainly in a direction that I wanted to see it go in. Um, instead of um, having large numbers of big buildings of inappropriate architecture, the, count, the uh, design process was changed, um, and I think we have less of those. The, the uh, appointment of commissioner things was changed. Uh, we also have a lot more culture. Rock Haven was acquired. We will have a library there. We now have a museum. Glendale has a museum. I've lived there a long, long number of years, um, and we had none. So I am extremely happy with what has gone on in the last four years. Um, and to have a Limley Theater um, here is, you know, we're getting to be like Pasadena. So I'm, I'm just more than thrilled that John has been here, the things he has done, um, and hope that in April 5th everybody will vote for him. Thank you. Thank you. Herbert Milano. Mayor Najarian, members of the City Council and City staff, my name is Herbert Milano. For the past several weeks, I have been presenting information to you, especially to answer the question as to what has happened to Proposition 13. For too many years, I have seen before the City Council several individuals attack Proposition 13, because apparently the rate in 1978 was lower than it was in other cities. And I'd like to pinpoint to you and bring to you a PowerPoint with regard to the trends in the property tax revenues that the city has gathered since 1978. If I can have that PowerPoint, please. My objective here is to continually bring to the public and to you that the city of Glendale's revenues, even though they have increased significantly since 1978, next slide, please. It has not constrained the, the city's uh, revenues at all. If we could compare the inflation rate versus the property tax rate, next slide, you will see that while the inflation rate went up by 234%, the property tax rate change was 1,100%. Next slide. So we see that in 1978, it was a little over $6 million in property tax revenues, and it's now exceeding $80 million. This amazing change in property tax has been insufficient to keep the city's budget on balance. Next slide. Next slide. So we looked at the problem, and it's in Glendale's salary and wage trends since 2000. As an example, the information taken from Form W3 that is submitted to the IRS. Next slide. Here we see the increase in salary and deferred salary and deferred wages since the year 2000. We practically have an exponential increase in the salaries that are insufficient to be met by the property tax revenue increases. Next slide. So in those slides, between 2000 and 2008, we have a 24% inflation rate, a 3.5% population increase for a combined increase of 25%. But payroll went up during that period of time by 50%. Pension expenses by 300%. Medical insurance expenditures by 500%. Next slide. 
So my, much of the claim has been made that you pay comparable wages for management. And in the last few years, we now have managers in collective bargaining. So instead of looking at how effective they are, we basically do collective bargaining for managers of all things. It's incredible. So here we look at the employment in 1999. There were 167 mid-management positions. By 2008, it had grown by almost 40%. Next slide. So we have a collective bargaining unit for managers so that we pay according to, not to individual performance, but we pay the salaries according to some other means that does not provide the type of accountability. Next slide. This is part of the, the recognition in, in the MOU. Next slide. And these have been the increases that we have had to management positions, some increasing nearly 9% during the years in which this city has had significant budget constraints, where there have been a significant amount of unemployment, and we have had budget short, shortfalls. So my point is this. It was said last week when I made this presentation that, oh, the next slide, please. And it, this concerns the motions to managers. It is my contention that managers, despite all of these problems, continue to receive uh, their compensation even when demoted. So I have before me some information concerning uh, managers whose behavior has been subject to review and whose salaries did not change. So we have six police officers who are responsible for the sexual harassment. Were they held accountable? We have police captain Swinford responsible for the cost over on the police building. He was not held accountable. And we have the significant other problems with sexual harassment and with uh, issues of um, uh, employment discrimination. Managers are not held accountable. We have medical insurance funds increasing from five million in 2003 to 21 million in 2010. We have the compensation insurance fund, the workman's compensation, by $16 million in one year. Claims. Where is the manager trying to hold the claims of workman's compensation for the city? It used to be $8 million back in 2003. We're now paying $16 million a year, and that fund is negative. Managers need to be held accountable, and collective bargaining should not be a practice in the city of Glendale. Mr. Milano, Mike Mohill. Good evening, Mayor Nigerian, Council Members. My name is Mike Mohill, long-term resident of Glendale, candidate for the City Council of Glendale. I came tonight to talk about a subject matter that has now been changed because of what Mr. Barry Allen presented to this Council. I was surprised to hear about it. But what was more surprising was to hear the speaker who spoke after Mr. Allen. He said, John Draymond is our hero, and I don't care what he's done in the, I don't care what he's done, he's broken the law, he's our hero, and that's all that counts. You know, during World War II, we had a man by the name of Hitler. I'm not saying, I'm not saying Mr. Draymond is Hitler, but Hitler, in spite of all the atrocities he did, he kept the trains on time. Oh, that's Mussolini. <laughs> Please, let's, we can argue the, uh, the point is, this is a, the, uh, history of, uh, the point is, this time. is a local hero gone adrift. I voted for Mr. Draymond in 2007, like many people. He was the white knight. He had promised us council districts, which he's never delivered on. You talked about that often in your campaigning, sir. And now we have the truth. I came before this council back in December, and I asked you, Mr. Drayman, Mr. K said to you, your Christmas present wasn't going to come to you or the other council members. And you smirked at me, he said, ah, Santa Claus. Well, Santa Claus is here tonight with the present. And it looks like the, the press is here too, Mr. Draymond. Because, you know, the public trust is looking at you. Character, record. 
We need to restore the public trust. When I see you every evening, every Tuesday night, pontificate what the public should do, how we should behave, and then you had the audacity to sit here since December when I first heard about this, not to come clean and tell the public what you've done, what you've been hiding. Now, you know, if you would have come close and come forward in December and said to the public, you know, Mr. Mohill, you're right. I'm a bad boy. Please forgive me. But no, you did not do that. And December became January. January became February. And here we are in March. And you still sit here telling the, telling the folks at home, like Mr. Nixon would say, quote, I'm not a crook. I have done nothing wrong. As they marched him almost to jail. Instead, he had to resign in disgrace. Where is the public trust that I gave you in 2007, Mr. Draymond? Where is that trust? I'm very disappointed. And I'm sure a lot of people who are watching these proceedings tonight are saying to themselves, gee, I gave that mind my vote in 2007, and here he is in 2011, and he wants me to give him his check, vote for me for re-election. I wasn't planning to run for real, I wasn't planning to run for election, Mr. Draymond, back in December, for sure. But when I read about you in the GNP, Glendale News Press, and in the Los Angeles Times, I said, you know what? My hero has gone adrift. And I want to change that. And that's one of the reasons I decided to run for city council, to help to restore the public trust. Because unlike the council members here, I don't take money from the unions, and they don't endorse me. They don't like me. Because they know that if I became a council person, the first thing I would do would freeze their salaries. Thank you. Please restore the public trust. My name is Mike Mohill, councilman, elect, and a date. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next speaker is uh, Mike Labutsky. Yes. Your turn, sir. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mike Labutsky. I currently reside in La Cañada. However, I also claim the residence of in Glendale 2121 Valderas Drive. The reason is that somebody stole my mail. And the, upon my conversation, with the postmaster of the main office in Glendale, it appears, well, he blames the city of Glendale. Now, also know the residents that stolen my mail. Anyway, because we were talking about fighting the fires and there is a national campaign on awareness of the dangers of fire. I would like to mention that in September I sent an email to the city, numerous city officials, including Mr. Jim Starbuck, uh, making them aware of the endangering of the public safety and the firefighters of Glendale by the company which called itself, well, the Falls of Montrose, but it's real Star Point Properties Incorporated of Beverly Hills. Now, five months later, I'm still waiting for a response. 
I, I heard two residents here saying that the city is doing a great job. I really applaud it. Why don't you do it to 21, 21 Valderas, the falls in Montrose too? Everybody deserves the same treatment. <clears throat> now, today, I'm sorry, you know, taking so much of your time, but you employees interrupt my preparations for the city council. Namely, today, around 4.30, I, my wife, and the residents of the city of La Cañada were visited by Detective, where is the camera? Detective Joshua Wofford of Homicide Division. Excuse me, city of La Cañada, is that your jurisdiction, attorney? Is that your jurisdiction, sir? City of La Cañada? Are you allowed to bother citizens there? Are you responsible for your police department, sir? Please respond. And I suggest that the detective Wood Woolworth takes care, takes better look at Glendale Adventist Medical Center and especially Dr. Kalika because it may be more productive, gentlemen. Now, as I requested a week ago that you put under citizen arrest the chief of police, Ron de Pompa. I'm still waiting for your response, gentlemen. Uh, this is the letter that I sent about the two days invasion. In that letter, I mention other things that happen in the city of Glendale, and I consider them as still not resolved, and they happened quite a while ago. Now, last but not least, I want to recommend to you this publication. Madness, are we all insane? This publication is put together by the Citizens Commission on Human Rights in Los Angeles, and that applies very well to your Glendale Adventist Medical Center. Now, one more thing that I want to mention and I send the email to the whole city council, so you will receive it. Uh, Sir, your time is up. Yes, I just, we're gonna be quick. Your five minutes is up. You, um, you need to wrap There up. is a First Amendment cartoon contest for students nationwide, uh, sponsored by uh, Judiciary of California. Thank you. And Constitutional Rights Foundation. I hope that you're going to make residents of Glendale aware of this. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next speaker is Margaret Hammond. Your watch, sir. Um, Mr. Butsky? Your watch. Your watch. <clears throat> Good evening, Your Honor, members of the City Council. Uh, my name is Margaret Hammond, and I've been a citizen of the city for 50 years. Um, I want to start off with I enjoy and am proud of being a member of the uh, Committee for Clean and Beautiful, which does promote our city, and we have had many awards through the efforts with the help, of course, of the citizens of Glendale and the City Council. Um, and I am glad to be back in home in Glendale, and uh, I attended Arbor Day today, which restores my faith in fellow citizens of Glendale. 
Uh, it was a wonderful event seeing many old friends, and I mean old friends, one beautiful lady, Gertrude Ness, being 105, I think it is, in April. Um, now, Hawaii is beautiful, but uh, I, being uh, back, I still think, being back here, I still think the most beautiful view uh, of anywhere is a morning view of the downtown Glendale and the views of the Verdugo Mountains from my deck, which I, I look north from my deck. Um, I also think the trip down number one from Carmel uh, to Ventura is one of the most breathtaking especially when you're driving in the ocean side lane. Uh, and uh, the big trees parts, and I, 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 there's nowhere in the world they're as beautiful as, Glenda, as our city, our state of California. Um, I also uh, see, but I also see here in City Hall that the lobby is still not finished, and uh, the portraits of the former mayors have not, be, have not reappeared, and the beautiful ceramic Glendale City Seal is still in a closet somewhere. But my main topic tonight is <clears throat> about Glendale tenants having been charged for trash pickup even though their landlords are paying for dumpsters. The city of LA was also following this practice and there was a class action against them and uh, the tenants won. And the city of LA has to refund the money back to the tenants. One lady got $1,400. Now, uh, I have talked about this for many years. I've always thought it was extremely unfair for the tenants. I'm telling people when I rent to them, I pay for the dumpster, I pay, I pay for the trash, you just pay for your uh, electric and, and uh, whatever, your phones and so forth. Uh, I just am saying I will be supplying the details of that lawsuit and uh, what are, and about the refunds in next next week. Uh, as I said, one tenant did get back 1,450, and many more suits are in the works right now against uh, the city of LA. And I believe that the Glendale tenants should uh, get together and take action and insist that they be refunded. It was double dipping and being charged for services that they never got, only through the uh, landlords paying for the dumpster. I pay $57 a month for that dumpster. And yet my, uh, and that is to go in and take the dumpster and remove it and put it back. Um, so I do feel that it is most unfair and I've said it for many years. So I'm saying I will be back with the details. Um, a lot of the things that come before you are rather heartrending in a way, uh, especially for someone that has been a very proud citizen of Glendale. Sure, I've got up here, I've had my say back and forth about things, but I do it in a way that I feel is for the best for my city and for my neighbors and friends that live here. So I do hope that uh, some of these things will be taken care of or cleared up or whatever we need to do so that the uh, good reputation of Glendale will be uh, remain untarnished or get it cleaned off. Thank you very much. Thank you. Myrna Stanley? Good evening, Mr. Mayor and Council Members. I don't know how you don't go into hibernation at election time. I, I don't know how you did. Um, thank you very much for what you do. Uh, I wanted to respond to Mr. Allen, but he seems to have left. He, he does that immediately after he comes up here and gives you half-truths or innuendos, makes accusations. Um, the information he gave you, the city has. It's nothing that he came up with him by sleuthing around. If, if he wants any kind of credibility, he needs to come up here and next week say something positive for a change. Every time I've been here at a meeting, he's also always making disparaging remarks, complaining. I don't know if he lives in Glendale. If he does, I don't know why. I, I have no clue. But he needs to come and say something positive for a change, and since he picked on you, Mr. Drayman, since you were his object for, for this evening, then he needs to come and maybe say some of the good things you've done. 
I, I don't need to tell you publicly, I did not support Mr. Draymond in his last election. I didn't oppose him, but I didn't support him. So I think I can come from a somewhat neutral position, and I just want to thank you for everything you've done to, to protect our neighborhoods. I, I, you've, you've done a lot with the planning department. You've done a lot with the zoning issues. And thank you for bringing Trader Joe's to Montrose. I feel like the person at Target with open, 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 because I was just up there this weekend at La, at, um, La Crescenta. I had to leave, went down to Glendale because I couldn't find parking. So thanks for doing that. And um, thanks to all of you for what you do. Bill Weissman. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, council members, city staff, and the public. My name is Bill Weisman, resident of far north Glendale, and I'm here tonight to talk some trash. And it's kind of nasty, but it needs to be dealt with. And I'm talking about stuff like hypodermic needles and bottles of liquor and fast food wrappers and dead animals and uh, all of the other uh, things that the Adopt-A-Highway crews uh, pick up along the Glendale Freeway. Uh, the portion of the Glendale Freeway uh, north and south of the mountain exit has been adopted by the organization <coughs> Atheists United, of which I am a member, and I volunteer my time roughly once every month or so to go out and spend a few hours on a Sunday or Saturday morning picking up trash. Uh, by the Glendale Freeway. And I'm actually here tonight for what may seem like a very odd reason. It's to say thank you to Mr. Billy Ray Cyrus. Now, I don't know if all of you know who Billy Ray Cyrus is. He has a daughter named Miley Cyrus who plays a very popular character named Hannah Montana. Uh, Mr. Cyrus recently has an interview in the latest issue of GQ, which I don't normally read. But, um, and that probably will come as no surprise to most of you, um, but uh, in, in the uh, interview, Mr. Cyrus talks about heading south to work in the satanic movie industry of Hollywood and being reminded of that every time he was on the Southbound 2 and saw the Atheist United sign. So I want to thank Mr. Cyrus for mentioning us. We have at least two new volunteers since that article came out who have joined our crew to come pick up trash. And uh, we need all the help we can get. If you've looked at that freeway, you'll notice that it's very trashy most of the time, especially the on-ramps uh, you know, around Mountain uh, and uh, further south where you have uh, the fast food places and a lot of uh, debris for that. And uh, in terms of some of the other uh, trash talking that we've uh, heard tonight, you know, I find it kind of interesting that the people who show up here to criticize the city, you know, I never see them when I'm out there picking up trash by the Glendale Freeway. You know, I don't see them when I'm up planting uh, coulter pine seedlings in the experimental forest. I don't see them when I'm up there doing trail clearing in Duke Magian Park. I don't see them when I'm sitting in a chair at the corner of... Uh, of uh, La Crescenta and Honolulu doing our bicycle and pedestrian count for which we've recently uh, received a, a report talking about those results. You know, I don't see these people down at Cruise Night or Unity Fest and so I kind of wonder what their connection truly is to the life of Glendale and what it is they would say that they are contributing to this city. And uh, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Michael Morgan. But Mussolini had the trains on time? Yeah, Mussolini had the trains on time. He doesn't, I hate to say this, first, good evening, Mr. Mayor, good evening, council members, good evening, city staff. He doesn't know anything. And I, civility prevents me from saying a lot of the things that I'd really like to say. Because I like to say to the city of Glendale, they're not telling you the truth. They don't want to tell you the truth. They don't care to tell you the truth. They just want to put out whatever they want to put out. And if you believe it, um, it's sad. You know, I, I had this speech, and, and I kind of read it because, you know what, I get up here, and even though I'm a commissioner in the city of Glendale, I tend to misfocus, but I'd like to say, you know, the Pied Piper is in town. Watch out. 
Again, you have heard more falsehoods and half-truths and innuendos. The city of Glendale, well run. I think so, and I think all of the citizens of Glendale realize that too. It is well run. We have a great city. All of this thing that they're saying is just simply not true. Are we going to be distracted by more innuendo and falsehoods? I think not. Look how well our council works and the city functions. I am a commissioner in the city of Glendale, and in spite of the largest recession since the 1930s, Glendale is seeing a renaissance with its growth that will be looked upon in the coming years as one of its golden eras. I am on this commission, and I see how well Glendale functions, and I see where we're going, and I want to stay the course. I mean, I see how hard all of you work, and it, it saddens me that people come up here and say this trash talk that just really... It's, it's bad. It's really bad. I want to say, look how this, the, well the council functions. Let us stay the course to even brighter days and not give in to the falsehoods and fall back to those pre-2007 levels, which were really Wild West days, those real pay-for-play days. You now heard from Mr. B.A., um, a, a true charlatan and a, and a real falsehood spreader. I would like to call what he really is, but decency, like I said, prevents me from saying that. But there's a saying that, that says that, remember, evil reigns when good men fail to act. And you really truly have to act and believe in this city. And it is a great city. And these are great councilmen. And you, all city members, all city, Glendale City citizens know the truth. You know, do not be deceived. Please look at these men. See their records. See where they've gone and where we are all going. And please do the right thing. Thank you very much. Thank you. I don't have any other cards. So the oral communications is closed. Comments? Mr. Weaver. I'd like to say a few things. I'd like to address my comments to the people at home. During the last few months, there's been a lot of attacks by Mr. Mohill, Mr. Barry Allen Silverman, which is his real name, on me, on Mr. Drayman, particularly the two of us. Just so you know, if you don't remember, Mr. Mohill accused me of money laundering. I challenged him to present the evidence or apologize. He hasn't apologized and he has, pronounced, has provided no evidence because there is none. He just likes to spout off. As for what Mr. Drayman has had to suffer through here tonight, this was all planned. We got the word, bringing down people to speak. I have two favorite channels in this city that I listen to. Channel 11, I have on at 5 in the morning. I listen to it until I leave the house at 7. They're here. Why? Well, they were told there's going to be a big thing going here tonight. I ask you, Mr. Mr. Allen Silverman, who... According to him, he's working with the FBI and the district attorney to investigate Mr. Drayman. And then he puts up all these pictures. For one, ask yourselves, how did he get inside Mr. Drayman's unit to take the pictures? To me, that'd be kind of trespassing. And another thing, if you're familiar at all with the Homeowner Association, I dealt with another one Two, prior to his occasion of water leakage in a condominium. There are homeowner associations, there's boards, and they represent all the people living in the homeowner association. They, as a board, are responsible for fixing water damage. They are responsible for pulling the permits to do the fixes. For Mr. Barry Allen Silverman to put up all these huge pictures, you sit and wonder, are they in the common area or are they inside his unit? Ask yourself the question, where did he get all this? Just throwing a picture up and trying to tie little dots together that make there something there? There's nothing. This is nothing but an attempt to destroy the character of Mr. Drayman and in past try to destroy my character. I told Mr. Drayman I wanted to speak for him. Because if it was directed at me, I'd be willing to say a few four-letter words that I shouldn't say. And he's been attacked too much on this. If he has done anything wrong, there's 
Department of Justice, the district attorney, the FBI, and all the rest that will address that. Not Mr. Barry Allen Silverman, who makes a life out of making life miserable for everybody in this city. By the way, he's never owned a home in Glendale. He rents and he moves from place to place until they drive him out. A real spokesman watchdog for this city. Apologize for what you're going through, Mr. Draymond. It shouldn't happen, and I'm still waiting for that apology from Mr. Mohill. By the way, they both left as soon as they spoke. Mr. Barry Allen Silverman picks up his thing, nods to the TV crew on his way out the door. Mr. Al and Mr. Uh, Mohill put on his hat and he's gone. We'll hear from him at the next council debate, which will be held here next Monday evening. Tune in. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Mr. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, I don't, I don't have anything to add except two words, common area. You're a lawyer, you know what that means. I used to practice law before I got tied up in this. <laughs> I remember those days fondly <clears throat> where there was a judge ruling people out of order when they came to speak and got out of line. Um, any other comments, Mr. Quintero? No, I took notes, but um, what's the point? I think we're all aware of what took place tonight. So. Okay. Uh, next item, do we have any new business? Yes, I do. <clears throat> I move that the city attorney be and hereby is authorized to enter into a stipulation to dismiss the city of Glendale in the matter of Central Basin w Municipal Water District versus Water Replenishment District of Southern California et al., Los Angeles Superior Court Case Number BS. 129817 as a real party in interest defendant. Second. Roll call, please. Council members Draymond? Yes. Friedman? Quintero? Yes. Weaver? Aye. Mayor Najarian? Yes. I think that concludes our business. Is there a motion adjourn? to adjourn? Is there a second? Mr. Second. Quintero? Second.